Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Jesper and in this video I'm going to talk about vitamin D deficiency as well as hypocalcemia and its manifestations in kids. This disorder in kids we refer to as rickets and when we talk about rickets we refer to the manifestations of vitamin D deficiency and its abnormal metabolism in children. The main key point to take home is that this is a disorder in children due to a deficiency of vitamin D as well as hypocalcemia and this results in an interference with the bone deposition within the growth plates of these kids. You may have heard the term osteomalacia and the term osteomalacia is used for hypomineralization occurring in adults. This hypomineralization predisposes these adults to fractures and most commonly the etiology or the reason is vitamin D deficiency. So another key point to take home is that osteomalacia is the term that we use for vitamin D deficiency with subsequent bone problems and bone mineralization disturbances in adults. And rickets is the term we use for the same process in children. So they are both disorders of bone mineralization and both are strongly correlated to vitamin D deficiencies. But rickets is used for kids and osteomalacia for adults. That's important. So the next high yield point we need to know is that vitamin D has a direct effect on blood calcium levels. A deficiency in vitamin D will subsequently result in hypocalcemia, so too low levels of calcium in the blood. This is due to vitamin D stimulating processes within the body, such as calcium absorption in the intestines, as well as calcium reabsorption in the distal renal tubules. To understand causes and etiological factors, we will talk briefly about vitamin D physiology. The way we get vitamin D is from the sun or our nutrition. If it's from the sun, our skin synthesizes vitamin D3 from a compound already present in the skin. That compound is called 7-dehydrocholesterol and this compound when irradiated with UV rays will form vitamin D3. Another option is to get vitamin D from food sources such as fish or grains or even supplements such as pills with vitamin D. However, we need to note that the active form of vitamin D is 1.25 dehydroxyvitamin D. And to get this active form, it needs to first be converted in the liver to another form and then in the kidney to the active form. So for vitamin D to activate, we need the liver to function properly and then the kidneys to function properly. For completeness sake, let's just mention that vitamin D3 will be converted in the liver first to 25 hydroxyvitamin D3, then in the kidney to further to 1.25 hydroxyvitamin D3. Okay, so why do we need to mention this? Well, it's important since problems in either the liver or kidney can also cause vitamin D deficiency and as well as osteomalacia or rickets and now we know the reason why. The calcium levels are also regulated by the parathyroid gland. The parathyroid gland is located on the thyroid gland and it secretes parathyroid hormone in response to low blood calcium levels. The effects of parathyroid hormone is that calcium is resorbed from bone, meaning it is taken from the bones so that it will compensate for the calcium levels in the blood. Now in the long run, this can damage the integrity of the bones since too much calcium is taken away from the bone to basically put it into the blood. And this is exactly what happens in vitamin D deficiency rickets. The areas of the bones affected in kids are the areas that include the growth plates. Let's talk about the most common causes of rickets in children. Generally, ricket remains a nutritionally dependent or a lifestyle disease. This is since it is in most cases due to either a vitamin D deficiency or calcium deficiency. So an improper diet or feeding of the child can cause a deficiency, but also an important reason is reduced exposure to sunlight and therefore reduced UV rays. It can be due to wearing clothing that does not allow the sun to properly hit the skin. It could be a geographical reason such as 
living far in the northern hemisphere where the sunlight is naturally weaker. And then of course other less common causes may be kidney problems which reduces the conversion to the active form of vitamin D, a liver problem and even malabsorption disorders may cause this, but those are less common. Let's talk about some high yield clinical signs or images of rickets. So we mentioned that the growth plates are the areas of the bones affected in children and the growth plates are located on the metaphysis part of each end of a long bone. Also worth noting is that the most obvious changes are seen in the bones where growth is the greatest. So examples of these are the knees, the wrists and the anterior ends of the ribs. On x-rays these signs can become apparent. So let's mention now three x-ray signs for rickets. The first one we'll talk about is rachitic rosary or rachitic rosary. This sign refers to an expansion of the anterior ends of the ribs and this is where the ribs meet the sternum. They're gonna be expanded and widened out and on the skin of the baby it can look like bumps on the skin. The second sign is cupping and this is often seen on the distal end of the ulna or radius and essentially what it looks like is that the end of these bones just before the wrist for example forms something looking like a cup. Another possibility is metaphysial fraying and that's when at the distal end of the ulna and radius the surface will appear irregular and coarse instead of being smooth. Lastly we'll mention splaying which refers to the widening of the ends of the metaphysial growth plates. Now let's talk about how it is diagnosed. If we suspect a pediatric patient to have rickets it would be good to order laboratory tests to check for blood calcium levels as well as vitamin D levels. In rickets patients these tends to be lowered and because of this the body compensates by producing more parathyroid hormone. So PTH might be elevated we should also then order x-ray imaging to check for the integrity of the bones and look for the signs we mentioned before, like metaphysial cupping, splaying or expansion of the anterior rib ends. Treatment is initiated as soon as possible once the diagnosis is confirmed. We try to stabilize the levels of calcium and vitamin D and can do this through oral supplementation. There's a schedule recommended and it depends on the age of the infant and if the infant is less than three months old, there can be a daily dose for 90 days in international units of 2000. If the infant is three to 12 months old, the same is relevant. So 2000 international unit daily dose for 90 days. After one year old to the patient being 12 years old, the dose is higher and the daily international units is three to six thousand international units and it's still given for a daily dose for 90 days and then if the kid is over 12 years old then as much as six thousand international units daily can be given to prevent rickets in the first place pediatric patients up to one year old is recommended to receive daily 400 international units of vitamin d as a prophylactic schedule. And in most infants, this is sufficient doses to prevent rickets. In the next video, I will talk about what happens if pediatric patients receives too much vitamin D. This is known as vitamin D toxicity, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if you find these videos helpful and you wanna watch some more videos when they come out, then press the subscribe button. Thank you.